Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this WNCT Now update. I'm Emily Severidge here in our digital studio. New COVID-19 cases are being confirmed across North Carolina. Health officials say nearly 13,000 positive cases have been confirmed across the state as of this morning. This afternoon, state leaders held a media update on the coronavirus. Let's take a listen. Given the nature of the virus, given that it's highly contagious and it can be very dangerous for some, we wanted to approach these easing of restrictions in a measured way. We wanted to start with lower risk activities where you're largely walking around if you're indoors and where it's easier to social distance. In two weeks, when we reassess where we are on our trends and hopefully are able to move into phase two, we can layer on these higher risk activities where, you're, where you may not be able to social distance um, if or sit, uh, or you might not be able to social distance or you're going to have to sit down for a more prolonged period of time, such as a salon where you're in close proximity or a restaurant where you're seated. Those activities will always still have risks and we will need to do all the things to do, that we're talking about now to keep the spread of the virus low when we address those additional activities. The Outer Banks will reopen to visitors on Saturday, May 16th. This comes after Governor Roy Cooper's Executive Order 138 to begin a phase one of easing some COVID-19 restrictions. Visitors are encouraged to confirm their reservation and arrival plans before travel. Officials say it is important to remember the coronavirus is not over. Social distancing guidelines are still in place. Gatherings remain limited to no more than 10 people, and restaurants are still on a takeout or delivery only basis. Hair and nail salons and entertainment businesses are still not open. Updated information on this will be on the Hyde County website. Just search for COVID-19 entry. Stay with us. We'll be right back with some more news after this short break. WNCT.com, your one stop for local news and weather from across the East with special features like online originals and our live stream WNCT Now. Visit WNCT.com for details not in the newscast. Thank you for joining us. If you're just tuning in, I'm Emily Severidge here in our digital studio providing you with some daily WNCT Now updates. The Better Business Bureau of Eastern North Carolina is warning people to be careful of scammers while playing the popular game Animal Crossing New Horizons. The BBB offers the following tips for safe gameplay. Beware of real-life transactions. Don't trade real-world real world money for in-game funds. Know your friends. Set boundaries with players you interact with, only providing codes to people you know and trust in real life. Create a safe space. If you must invite strangers to your island, fence off areas and things that you don't want to be possibly stolen. Work is continuing on the pedestrian bridge at Town Commons in Greenville. Officials say the bridge's improvements should be completed and ready for use by mid-June. More details on this will be provided soon. Now, I'm sure a lot of you by now have heard of the murder hornet. It originated in Asia and has somehow made its way over to the U.S. 24 Hours News 8 in Michigan has more on this developing story. Tonight, we're talking with the experts about an insect that's striking fear around the United States. They've been dubbed murder hornets. Could we see them here? The Asian giant hornets have been confirmed to be out west in Washington state. These things are scary looking. They're about two inches long. The hornets rarely attack humans, but if they do sting you, it is extremely painful. They become most dangerous from late summer to early fall when they attack honeybee populations. Right now, experts are still trying to determine if there's a strong enough population out west for them to take a foothold here in North America. We spoke with one of the top Canadian researchers out there today and asked if they could survive here in Michigan. I live in places in Asia with snow in the winter. Um, Grand Rapids gets a fair bit of snow, but it's also tempered a little bit by being pretty close to, to the lake, Lake Michigan. So um, personally, I would sort of half suspect they would live there. In general, I don't think, well, I, it's gotten a lot of hype, probably because of that name. 
but um, it, it is a very dangerous insect. And if people do encounter a big insect, especially if it's going in and out of a hole in a tree or going in and out of a hole in the ground, they should um, call somebody and get them to check it out because these things could, I mean, maybe they're already in Eastern North America somewhere and we just haven't, nobody's noticed them. I doubt it, but it's possible. <laughs> It'll take years, they say, to determine if the hornets will successfully establish here in North America. So if we do see them here, it won't be for a long time. If you do run into one, the best one. Okay, well, that's pretty terrifying. Uh, some reports actually say that a sting from a murder hornet feels like a hot metal blade going into your skin. So I really hope I don't come across one of those anytime soon. That sounds awful. Um, some positive news, though, for you coffee lovers out there. Starbucks stores across the country are slowly reopening its doors starting today. It'll look different at each location. Some will offer pickup at the door. Some will have counter pickup available through their Starbucks app, and others will do order inside and then have you take your items to go. Well, that wraps up this WNCT Now digital update. I'm Emily Severidge here in our digital studio. Thank you so much for watching.